Without further ado, I, I like to start our fireside chat with Mr. Murai. You produced so many mm -hmm. uh, music uh, pieces, which became really widely popular, including "Give Me a Wings" and uh, "Ballad of Rainbow and Snow." Both of them were featured in the Olympic Games, Nagano, Sapporo, mm -hmm. and um, yeah. most recently in Tokyo 2020. Yeah. And uh, they were uh, featured in the Japanese textbooks, music textbooks. So many kids that grew up with your your songs, and it's really amazing. And it's uh, been very honored and privileged for us to be able to hear your story. You happen to live here in uh, Los Angeles and we came to learn that you were the music uh, director for Tampopo. Mm -hmm. So you, you knew Mr. Uh, Juzo Itami, the director. Um, yes. how, how did you come to know him and can you describe who, who he was and what kind of person he was? It's a long story. Um, when I was a student, maybe I was 18 years old, 19 years old, I read the book he wrote, this book. Europe. Diary in Europe. He's so talented. He wrote two, three bestsellers. You know, the book sold over a million and gave a lot of influence to young Japanese people. Those days, early 60s, uh, not many people could go out from Japan to see the world. So uh, he's the rare person who went out from Japan, visited many different places because he was acting in an uh, American movie called uh, 55 Days in Peking, mm -hmm. Beijing. He acted with Charlton Heston, Eva Gardner, <laughs> you know, David Neven. I think it was 1962. This was uh, shot in Spain, not, not in Hollywood. They made a huge you know, set of the uh, Beijing in somewhere in Spain and I think he stayed in London and he commuted from London to Spain to, to, to make this movie. Almost everything about his experience in Europe is in the book. So I was very much impressed by the book and I was eager to you know, meet him. Luckily we have many mutual friends and one of them was the, uh, uh, Michael Chao who played in the same movie. He has a Chinese restaurant in Beverly Hills called Mr. Chow. Expensive one. Yeah, <laughs> expensive. <laughs> uh, since 1974. But prior to the uh, uh, Beverly Hills restaurant, he opened a, a restaurant in London, in Kensington. And uh, I think Michael gave a lot of ideas about working uh, as an artist uh, in international world. You know, that's how I met, not personally, but how I learned about him. I see. Yeah. So he obviously was uh, multi-talented because he was a writer, yeah. um, he was an actor. He first established his fame as being an actor in a major film like uh, Peking, uh, 55 Days in Peking, which yeah. featured Boxer Rebellion in China. It, it was uh, based upon the true story and he played uh, one of the major roles in the, the film. Uh, uh, there's an Italian restaurant in Tokyo called Canti Restaurant, uh, which is located in Roppongi, uh, very close to Tokyo Tower. And there is the uh, guest house for foreign ministry and uh, Russian embassy. And the right next door to the Russian embassy is American Club, very strange, you know, <laughs> interesting place. And Itami-san moved to right next door to the restaurant in 1970s. Mm. This restaurant was owned by my friend's parents, so I used to go there every day and I used the coffee shop of the restaurant as a, my office, you know, having a meeting with the artists, you know, producers, you know, mm. uh, film people. And Itami uh, was sitting down in the coffee shop every day for three, four hours so we started talking, you know. <laughs> what, what, what was he doing? Was he kind of oh, sitting he had, there quietly? Oh, he had a meeting just, you know, he used the coffee shop as his office. Oh, <laughs> like oh, I okay. used the coffee shop as an uh, uh, office. So we started talking and then he invited me to act as an actor for his experimental film. Experimental film? Yeah, so which I did. It's a very surrealistic pornography 
Pornography. <laughs> I, I didn't get off my clothes, but, but uh, very strange movie. And then he is so talented that he taught his cat to act. So he uses hand pistol and he says, bang, and then cat fall down. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, I, I think that dog can do it, but I've never seen cat do it. <laughs> my, my cat would never do that kind of thing. So, 1985, he directed the first movie called The Funeral. Not a huge hit, but everybody talked about the movie. So great movie. And then I, of course, I watched the, this movie. And then he said he's going to make a story about ramen. Mm. And I said, oh, I'd like to do music, you know. I'd like to be in the movie too. <laughs> and you were in the movie. You are yeah, in the yeah. movie. And then Itami-san, I helped you when you're making the experimental movie, you know. <laughs> Why not <laughs> uh, hiring me as a music director? And he decided to hire me uh, as a music director. That's how I met that's, him. You know? <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. And I heard that it was a rather low-budgeted film. He did mm. not have much of fund. Mm -hmm. So he had to ask you to be the music director. He uh -huh. had to ask his friends and acquaintances to act um, in the film as well. So mm -hmm. what was the theme of the movie? I mean, uh, when I first saw the film, it was funny. I could send some message, but uh, not really deeply, but uh, can you tell us a little bit about what was the message, what was the theme of the film? Uh -huh. I read the book and I instantly I understood what he wanted to do. Mm. He's a very intellectual uh, person and very complicated, you know, uh, person. His sister married to the Nobel Prize winner writer Kenzaburo Oe. Oh. So, you know, they're discussing something very difficult, you know, for me to understand. He is 12 years older than I, so he spent his youth, you know, until the war ended in 1945 when he was 12 years old. Basically, he's, he loves good life, he loves beautiful things, he's a Kipilian, he loves good food, but he has a, a little bit complicated, He's, he always feels the feeling of absurdity, absurdity, I don't know how to pronounce it, uh, it's, it's in the book of uh, Albert Camus, like a mm -hmm. uh, Camus. stranger, um, uh, pest kind of thing. This is, you know, a fun story, but at the same time it tells real life of the people, life, death, you know, sex, you know, all those things. Mm -hmm. So that, that part made this movie more, you know, artistic and uh, I think that's the reason why even now everybody, you know, love, in including the younger generation, li like my son and my son's, mm -hmm. you know, friends, they like this movie very, very much. I see. So the message, the theme is much deeper mm. uh, than just about the woman. Um, I'm not going to be a spoiler, by the way, for the first time uh, viewer, but uh, about the woman who's struggling to make good ramen. But um, it's about life mm -hmm. and death. Yeah. And life involves eating, of course, mm -hmm. but even sensual sexuality. Uh -huh. We will see some scenes uh, mm. related to sexuality, but that's part of the life. That's true. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then he wanted to make this uh, very fun action movie. And he used the uh, idea of uh, shame. Those days we called it Western movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there are similarities between the two. Yeah, that's And right. that's the real Western, but his is ramen Western. That's right. That's true. So those days there was the uh, Italian Western movies. It was called Macaroni Western or Spaghetti Western, something like that. So Itami-san says, this is ramen Western. <laughs> he didn't have much budget and he said to me, Kuni, um, I want to use classical music because I don't need to pay copyright. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning that I don't have to pay you, right? If, if he asked you to compose new yeah. pieces, then yeah. he would have to, have to pay you. 
I think it's a very good idea. I made a choice for this movie, and I picked up the Gustav Mahler's Symphony No. 5. He's been to America in 1910s. He conducted New York Film, and I, he wrote the Symphony No. 5 1902, I think. This music was used to the movie called Death in the Venice in 1971. And I was a big fan of uh, uh, this movie, mm. directed by Lucchino Visconti, the very talented Italian uh, movie director. And I played the music to Itami-san, and he said, wow, what a great music. Yakuza w w uh, with a white, in a white suit shot and die with this music. That's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> you see the, the scene. <laughs> yeah, so he loved the idea. So this is a way to choose you know, good classical music. It's a I, beautiful music and it's about, of course, Venice, uh, death in Venice. And it's, uh, the theme is like life but then death. So that's it's true. consistent too. Oh yeah. yeah, you should see this movie again because this tells about the life under pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, the story takes place in uh, Venice, early 90s, and uh, early 19th and uh, no, 20th century. Mm -hmm. And those days, uh, cholera mm -hmm. was spread all over the world, and you know many people died in Venice too. Sure. Uh, you, and the main you, person eventually dies with yeah, the disease. Yeah, that's right. Liszt, Franz Liszt, Hungarian great pianist, but he wrote many, uh, composed many songs. And uh, this is based upon the poem written by uh, Alfonso de la Martine, who is a poet at the same time uh, he was a politician, competed with Napoleon III. And uh, this is based on la Martine, de la Martine uh, poem which says, life is a prelude to the death. So again, this, this is about the death. And then it's a very sweet, it has a very sweet melody. At the same time, it's a very strong, you know, mm. uh, uh, melody line too. Beautiful. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful music. He, Juzo Itami was a genius, but I feel that you are a genius to have selected among all the classical music and composers, you selected these two, yeah. which fit right into the, the film. And I particularly like this uh, part because it kind of characterizes uh, the warm personality of um, Tampopo. Mm -hmm. Warm, quiet, smiling, kind yeah. of. So you would see um, the, the film and uh, where it's used, but uh, I, I love this part. Yeah. Well, uh, I have to tell you that I have a great stuff. I have a longtime friend who passed away this January, who really knows all the classical music. Mm. He listened to all the records, you know, the important recording of the classical music. And then luckily I've been uh, friend with him for more than 50, 60 years. So when I do the project, I hired him <laughs> to help mm, me. I see. Mahler, I, I made a choice, but this choice was from him, mm, Mr. Komatsu. <laughs> he worked for the Toshiba EMI company. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I see. Wonderful. It's, uh, it was part of the teamwork too. That's true. So the, in the movie, but it's a recording, it's the same thing, you know, you have to have a good, you know, friends mm -hmm. who understand each other, you know. Right, and, and of course, uh, friends must have supported his film production a lot, including um, actors and actresses. Mm. Can you talk a little bit about it? And I saw Ken Watanabe yeah, when he was young. Yeah, this is another uh, thing I 
wanted to mention, uh, after the funeral of the first movie, all the uh, actors, uh, the staff, they wanted to work with Itami mm. because he knows, you know, how to uh, tell, you know, <laughs> to to the actors to do. He even directed his cat, you know. <laughs> right. I think many uh, actors uh, raise the hand, you know, I'd like to do, I'd like to do, I'd like to do this. And as a result, now in Tampopo, there are so many great actors, including the Otomo or mm -hmm. Ryutaro san. Otomo Ryutaro is the uh, big star in, in samurai movie, even before the war. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> He's real legend of Japanese, you know. Movie. Ken Watanabe now is a huge star, but he's playing a small role. No, not the small, but the. Supportive. Yeah, supportive. Uh, so, someone like it was, it almost dates back to 40 years ago. So, Ken Watanabe was a young actor. Yeah. He, he must have gained a lot, he must have learned a lot I think through so. this uh, yeah. film production. Yeah, I think so. Nobuko Miyamoto, of course, uh, was his wife yeah. um, and she starred in many of his uh, films. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about Nobuko Miyamoto? What kind of person he, she, uh, she is? Nobuko Miyamoto was uh, the commander. <laughs> <laughs> so when I asked uh, uh, Itami-san to hire me as a musical director, he said, well, I, I need to, to get the permission from uh, Miyamoto. <laughs> <laughs> I and Itami visited her in the backstage of Imperial Theater and he looked at me and he said, she said, okay, <laughs> So she's she, the real boss. <laughs> well, he, he directed so many actors, even the cat, everybody mm. followed him, but not Nobuko Miyamoto. Mm -hmm, she was right. the real boss, yeah. <laughs> so funny, yeah. um, but they were a really loving couple. Yes. It's, it's beautiful. That's right. I also wanted to ask you a little bit about the museum that was uh, built in Ehime Prefecture, Itami Juzo Kinenka Museum. Oh yes, I'd like to mention about this. If you go to Japan the next time, uh, please visit this museum. This is located in uh, Shikoku Island, Ehime Prefecture. And the producer of the movie is my friend, Mr. Tamaoki, who came from Ehime. He decided uh, to start this museum uh, in Ehime. This is the home of Itami-san and then the father of Itami-san. So it's a nice place, mm. good food, good fish, nice weather, and very famous uh, hot spring. Uh, That's there. great. Yeah, that yeah. sounds really fascinating. Right. So um, when you go there to the museum, you can learn everything about Juzo Itami and yes. his uh, films are um, screened every so often, I, I heard. Mm -hmm. So looking forward to, and cafe serves some things, some of the foods that Juzo Itami loved. Yeah. So um, fascinating place to be. One last question. Mm -hmm. um, so you have entertained personal friendship and relationship and was like 40 years ago, um, low budget film, he could not probably uh, pay you much, mm -hmm. um, yeah. uh, even uh, though you, you supported him being an actor in the experimental pr pornography. Mm -hmm. So money was not there, mm -hmm. um, but uh, how do you feel about having been part of the film? Oh, I'm very happy, you know, because number one, I love the, this movie a lot and then I'm so proud because the younger people including my son, who is the movie director. Oh yes, hero, he, he says, is what a wonderful, successful. then he even have a poster in his office <laughs> of this movie. <laughs> so I'm very happy uh, to have been able to be in a part of this movie. Great, and yeah. the, the film Juzo Itami is, uh, continues to be an inspiration for many film people, all of us, uh, pe people who are like young, successful uh, film director like your son. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's been great having you, um, Thank you. shared your stories and please uh, a big, another, give a, another big round of applause. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.